got a twenty thousand dollar HELOC. Yeah, I had uh, I have a twenty thousand dollar HELOC, and the last time you and I talked, it was uh, August twenty eighth, and I was going to uh, start my velocity banking in October, and I think the twenty eighth was on a Friday, and I didn't have enough time, so I started uh, my velocity banking uh, the first of November. So I'm about six weeks into uh, into my program. Okay. Can you explain the HELOC? Yes. Uh, the HELOC is on a rental property that I have. The rental property has been paid off for a long time. Uh, the HELOC is with Wells Fargo. And uh, I have a uh, credit card that I can use, but I have to spend a minimum of $300 on it. And basically, uh, I've just been taking uh, uh, money out of my HELOC uh, to chunk $10,000 onto my uh, mortgage. Okay. And I did that the uh, 1st of November. All right. The other credit cards are at 0%. Yes. I have uh, I have one credit card with uh, nine thousand sixteen hundred dollars on it. It's at zero percent until July twenty fifth of twenty twenty, and then I have a second credit card with a zero percent, uh, and that offer ends October of twenty twenty one. That second credit card has six thousand three hundred and thirty dollars on it. Gotcha. And then I have a third credit card when you're ready. Yeah, I think I wrote it down already. Okay. The eight thirty six, right? Yes, sir. And that's the one uh, credit card I run my expenses through on a monthly basis, and I pay it off monthly. No interest. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, if I pay it in full every month, I have no interest. Now, there's no issue with the HELOC in terms of how I pull money out, put money in, right? Because I, I know you wrote a lot of notes here on the side for me. Yeah, um, I've got all that figured out. Um, I'm unable to uh, transfer like uh, you've been teaching us. What I have to do is write myself a check and then I uh, take my phone and I mobily deposit it into my account. And uh, it usually shows up there the next day in my account. So I'm not having the issues I was uh, back in August whenever I was talking to you. I got all that ironed out. Okay, so we don't have any issue. So just um, explain it to everyone else once more in terms of what were you having trouble with doing with, uh, with the HELOC in terms of putting money in, taking money out? The way I always say it is have your checking account and your line of credit. Money goes from the line of credit to the checking account, checking account, income to the line of credit. So tell us what yes. you were having issues with and then how'd you manage to you know, work it out in your situation so that you can still you know, use it to your advantage. Okay, um, my my HELOC is with Wells Fargo, and my bank account is with uh, a local a local bank. Um, and I've had my HELOC for um, probably eight years, and I've never used it. And I just went ahead and instead of getting a HELOC with my local bank, I just kept my Wells Fargo one. And I uh, ended up, whenever I was making transfers, I was, uh, it was taking me three days to get from a HELOC to my bank account. And then I figured out if I can just write myself a check, mobile deposit, it would get in there the, the next day. So I'm a little bit slower than what you prefer, but it's working. And I'm probably going to stick with it uh, for at least a little while. Have you considered getting a Wells Fargo checking account to make that a simpler process? 
Yes, I have, but uh, I live in West Virginia, and there is no uh, Wells Fargo right. Bank locally, so um, I didn't want to do that. Gotcha. Hmm. Okay. So just by writing yourself a check, going to that local credit union, in person depositing it, boom, shows up right in the checking account. Yeah, I'm doing that over the phone. I've got the mobile deposit. Oh, okay, so okay. You're I doing take it over the phone. yeah, yeah. So you're making it happen. And so the only thing in terms of when you say going slow, what you have to do maybe is instead of every three to five days that you're taking money out, put money in. Maybe you're doing it what every two weeks, or something like that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it every two weeks. So Pretty much I from take paycheck to paycheck, like you. Yes. Okay, that works, and that doesn't, that, you know, doesn't, it's not a, a huge difference comparing to someone that maybe does it daily. They're they're saving a couple of dollars more than you are, but we're still yes. able to, you know, do the damage that we want to. Yes. All right. So that six thousand dollar one. This thing expires, you said October, right? Yes. 2021. 2021. I'm not even going to pay attention to that. And then the 9K, that expires July. Yes, sir. So we are going to pay attention. That's my current balance on the HELOC. Okay. We're almost at zero. Good cash flow here. So you said you were making 10K chunks, right? Yeah, 10,200 is what uh, the first chunk I made. And that wasn't quite the 66% that you uh, recommended. But uh, I, had, I had some other expenses I need to pay. So I just made my the biggest chunk I could mm -hmm. that first time. You currently have PMI. Yes. Um, yeah, we need 102. to talk about that. Once, once I get my mortgage down to 270, I think it's $78,000, um, I will have my uh, loan to debt ratio in a position where I can drop the PMI and that will increase my cash flow uh, $281. Mortgage balance, $300,075.51. Okay. Break down. Can you break down the monthly payment for me? The monthly payment is uh, for my mortgage is $2,062.62. Do you know what goes towards principal and interest? <laughs> oh, That's there's what I a lot of interest. Um, this this loan is uh, barely a year a year old. Um, I do not have those numbers right now, but okay. when I made that ten thousand two hundred dollar chunk, I saved uh, about twelve thousand dollars on interest. All right. So I can probably. I might be able to guess it. Yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and look that up while while you're talking. The goal is to get it to two seventy eight. Yes, sir. Twenty two thousand seventy five fifty one away from that. I definitely want a chunk. So I only owe. 3800 right now. So let me see. How long ago did you chunk from the last 10,000? Uh, it was the first payment of November. So did you Okay, I see what happened. Most of your income's in there. Yes. Okay. So you just chunked. Yes. Um, let's see. You get paid by weekly, by weekly, monthly? Yes, sir. Uh, two times by by monthly. Okay. Okay. You 
Can you give me the dates when I get paid? Um, I get paid uh, on the 1st and the 15th of the month. So if my balance is at 3,894.59 between now and the 15th, how much money uh, are you going to spend in terms of expenses? Um, I have all my expenses on a credit card and uh, gotcha. all my expenses are, are due. Uh, I'll tell you when they're due. They're due on the 12th. Okay. Uh, no, they're due on the 15th. So the uh, credit card that I have $836 I owe, uh, I'm going to pay that off on the 15th of this month. And then I get my next paycheck yes sir okay do you already have money in your checking account to take care of whatever bills that can't be paid with a credit card yes yeah I've got all that taken care of so no money is coming out well uh, at the beginning of the month I uh, I uh, owe one thousand fifty dollars, so I just I take it out, and whatever's left in my paycheck, I throw it right on my HELOC. Okay, so it's the tenth. So are we going to be pulling any more cash out of the HELOC before the fifteenth? No, no, I will uh, I will not be taking anything out of the HELOC until later this month. So my next paycheck, uh, I will be putting $2,700 down on my HELOC. Okay. It will go, we'll go into my HELOC. But you said that the credit card is due on the 15th this month. Yes, sir. I've, so got, how... I've, got, I've got the money to pay it in my checking account right now. Okay, but shouldn't that money be sitting in the HELOC? Uh, yeah, my my rent uh, my rent income uh, check just came yesterday, and I'm going to use that six hundred and fifty dollars to put down on the credit card plus uh, a couple hundred dollars I have in my checking account. So I usually try to keep. Uh, Four hundred dollars minimum in my checking account. Like a buffer, okay. Yes. Because of your unique situation here. Yes, sir. Gotcha. So on the fifteenth, you get twenty-seven hundred. You said. Yes. So the other income is the rental. Yes. When does so, that come? What day does that come? Um, it usually comes the second week of each month. I have a property manager. It goes to the property manager and then comes to me, and I usually get it the second week uh, of the month. Okay. So on the 15th, money is only going in to the HELOC. Yes, sir. Yeah. Nothing's coming out. Nothing's going to come out. And then the, the thousand that you get, that's wife, that helps pay half, or is that how that works? You will pay some yes. more mortgage? That's basically income. Yes. Okay. When does she give you that? Um, uh, the first of every month. So that's in. That's included with that seven thousand fifty-seven dollars. Uh, her her thousand dollars is in there. Okay. So I'll put that in with my income. It's a, it's been kind of difficult for me to do velocity banking, mm -hmm. separate from her. Um, but I'm I'm doing the best I can with that. She kind of on board or. Yeah, oh yeah, she's on board. She's okay. doing velocity banking uh, on her own. And one of these days, we'll, we will be combining our, 
our accounts and expenses someday. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pray on that. Let's see. All right. So just this month, the rest of money that's coming in this month is the 27. No other uh, additional money is coming in. And then from the 15th to the 1st, how much money is coming out of the HELOC? I'm going to take uh, $1,950 out of the HELOC on the 27th of November. That's it? That's it. So $3,144.59. Times my interest rate, so I might pay 21 bucks in interest for the month of November at max. Might be a little less. Okay. I feel like there's more bills. I don't know why. Are you sure that's all I'm pulling out? Yes. Um, hang on just one second. That that pretty much covers it. There's there's another that another expense uh, that one thousand fifty that I have on the first of every month. I just I just pay it right off the bat as soon as I get my paycheck, and then I dump the rest of it in. Um, I so dumped the rest of my paycheck into HELOC. So shouldn't we be dumping all our money in? And then, well, or do I not have enough time in your situation to do that? My my one thousand fifty dollars goes to my ex-wife for uh, child support, and it gets automatically taken from my bank account. It's an oh, auto okay. pay, so there's not enough time for me to dump it all in the HELOC and then and then get it back in to the bank a, uh -huh. for her for her to have it. I'm trying to be slick. All right. <laughs> I know. It'd be nice if I could do that. Yeah, because it'll it'll put more damage. So technically, even though I'm making seven thousand a month, I'm not putting all of it in the HELOC every month. That is correct. Do you know what that actual number is that I'm putting in per month into the HELOC? Yes, sir. Um my first paycheck of the month, um, I put uh, $1,700 into my HELOC. The second paycheck of every month, I put $2,700 into my HELOC. And then in the middle of the month, I have that rent check coming in. Um, I haven't been putting that in because it's coming to me about the same time as my credit card is due. Hmm. I see. I see what you're doing. So we have a situation here where we're doing velocity banking not with all of our income. This is the salary pay. Goes into the HELOC. Rental income is doing velocity banking on the credit card expenses basically. It's like a wash. That's happening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gotcha. And you're just paying the statement balance each time. Yes, sir. And then what is the total amount of money that comes out of the HELOC each month? I see the 1950 19, there. 1950. That's total. Yes, sir. That'll be that'll be the numbers I will be using until uh, someday I have another apartment that's vacant, um, and one day those numbers will go up. Uh, my income numbers and my expense numbers will go down a little bit um, since I'm paying utilities on that vacant apartment right now. Okay. When I do forty-four minus nineteen fifty. I get two thousand four fifty, and my cash flow is okay. only this. So I know for sure, four thousand four hundred goes in each and every month. A 
I just need to figure out how much is coming out to make sure like basically all this cash flow is sitting in the HELOC each and every month. And the other thing I'd like to know is if I was to open up a checking account with Wealth Fargo online, I think you can use other banks if you ever needed to take cash out for any reason. Other than that, everything would be online, online banking. Could that yeah, work? yeah, yes, it could. I, it it take a little bit of work, but I can do that. Because because I know you don't you don't need to go to a bank to open up a checking account. I know you can do that online with Wells. You use the Wells Fargo app, and then you can just be doing online transfers, like like everyone else has the capability to do without having a nearby branch. And then if for any reason you needed cash, there's those um, general ATMs at the, the Walmarts and the shopping centers that people can use where it doesn't charge those ATM fees. So maybe there's a supermarket in your area that is a general ATM and as long as Wells Fargo is partnered with that ATM then there's no fee to ever pull out cash if, if you need it. Which you really shouldn't have to use cash for anything. Um, but it's always nice to have a couple dollars in your wallet. Yes. So maybe we can work on that. Because I think life would get a lot easier. Now that <laughs> yeah, I know, I think so too. now that I know, not all of this is going in the HELOC. That does make a difference in terms of how much interest we're getting hit with, especially when we have a uh, you know sixty-six percent owed. Yes, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. So we're going to work on that. In the meantime, we're able to figure out total amount of money coming out. Hmm. Ted says, question to Craig should be how much of his income can go freely to HELOC and keep doing it every month. How much of his income can freely go to HELOC? Well, that would be that right here. This is what's this is what he's freely doing, no issue. Is the seventeen and the twenty seven being the forty four hundred. But I'm trying to get all seven in there. Well, uh Denzel, maybe I can uh set all this up and when I'm about ready to do another chunk, um switch everything over to my other bank and start fresh with mm -hmm. all of my income into the HELOC. But for right now, I'm trying to figure out total amount of expenses because I want to make sure I'm not, uh, I want to make sure I don't over leverage here. So my cash flow is only 1863.51. So there's no way that I'm having 2,450 stay in the HELOC each month, especially if not all my income is going in to begin with. I would assume the number would be 44 minus the, the cash flow. Yeah, I had it right. So about 2,500 would be the about from what I'm getting, but I want you to make sure. Um, I'm unable to do uh, math as fast as you. <laughs> That's all right. I'm no good at math. <laughs> so I know for sure if I just made a chunk in November for the 10,000, I'm trying to figure out, like, did you have extra money? Yes, yes, uh, that makes sense. I had money, I'm sorry, I had money in my uh, 
my checking account and I just dumped it all except for about $400. I dumped it all in there. So that first month, um, I, I put, uh, about $4,000 into my HELOC. So that's what really brought it down. That explains everything so, now. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't point that out, but mm -hmm. I went ahead and, uh, I took out 2000 or 10,200 uh, out of the HELOC. I put in 4,000, which left me a HELOC balance of 6,200. Okay. I'm projecting January is our chunk month. Yeah, that's, that's what I have figured. Okay. And what I, I did was I, I highballed it. 44 going in, 25 going out, balance, end of December, January, I can go ahead and make a chunk. I'd like to make a chunk half of this 22,075.51. Gets me that much closer to removing the PMI. If I can do half, or I can go maybe like 13,000. So come January, if I'm at a zero balance, or between zero and 1200, you make a chunk that brings your balance up to max being like 14, I'd only go as high as 14,000. But you could just do a 13,200, exactly 66% uh, a pound right on that mortgage soon as it goes to, we have from January to July to bring that to zero so that I can pay off that credit card, all right? Yes, sir. So that'll be my third chunk. Second chunk, mortgage, and then July, third chunk, credit card, payoff. I like it. Any questions? No. No, that's uh, that looks pretty good. I uh, I should get a a hope I get a bonus uh, in March that will be a little you know a little helper there uh, mm -hmm. during between that uh, you know right before that chunk there that next one. So mm -hmm. I I don't always get a bonus, but it's it's a potential thing. So November 2020 or sooner, I will chunk for a fourth time at the mortgage to remove the PMI. I would have already had a 110 cash flow gain from the credit card, and I would have saved another probably eight to 10,000 in interest on the mortgage itself, getting me that much closer to wiping that out. Yep, that sounds that sounds right. So November being the latest, that bonus, this cash flow from July to November will definitely uh, speed up the process. This fourth chunk is going to be significantly less than the second one where we chunk nearly more than half of this because you're still going to be making your mortgage payment. And now way more of that is going towards principal. So that's going to help us. So we have all the payments from now till before November. If it only takes, let's say, five to 10,000 to remove PMI, we'll go a little higher. We'll also increase that HELOC for sure, like around July or sooner can increase the HELOC. We'll swap okay. it. it. We'll do it. That's for all 2020. Now, what are some goals, financial goals? Um, Denzel, I'm, I'm 55 years old. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time to pay my mortgage off, so that's I just want to get out of debt. Um, okay. And I, I would like to get into um, – infinite banking uh, maybe get a policy out on my 14 he's 14 right now he'll be 15 next week 
and I, if I can get my mortgage paid off in, um, you know, maybe six, seven years, uh, get a policy out on him, uh, and I would be the owner, uh, and maybe move forward for with some kind of plan like that. I like it. So let's set a goal. Debt free before or by 59 instead of seven years, right? 59 instead. Yeah, 59 is not too far away. Not at all. You have assets. We have 401k. We have stocks, some life insurance. Keep all that, right? Yes, sir. Your 14 year old, will he be 18 when you're 59? Let's see. Uh, does, he, does he turn 15 this year or um, just turn 14? He t he'll be 15 next week. I'm I'm exactly 40 years older than he is, so whatever the math is. Yeah, I'll be 58 when okay, he's 18. Perfect. So he'll be an adult, no longer yes, sir. a juvenile uh, policy. So that enables us to put more money into his policy. So we wouldn't be limited as to how much money we could, you know, put into his policy. So that'll be something we'll definitely look into and can draw some illustrations on an 18 year old or 19 year old male when you're 59 or sooner. What I would do is actually, I would want to direct all of his income streams that he's going to get from the 401ks and the stocks when he starts liquidating those things because that's what will end up happening as soon as you hit 59 and a half then you're able to start taking the distribution if it, you know or, or if he stops working let's say at that time or continues to keep working whatever it is we set up a policy that allows us to put in the amount of money that he cash flows at 59 plus the distributions from his assets to simply fall into his son's policy, which we then borrow out so he can live off of. This way, that same money can keep working for him at a tax-free interest rate. His son is already set up for life in terms of that death benefit. It's going to be massive when, when he becomes 40, 55. It'll be off the charts um, and anything goes down the process the the son when he be, you know goes to college dad is in control but that's a that's a little fun right there to tap into to help son kind of move along through the process of you know growing becoming a man all that good stuff so I want to definitely look at that I gotta take some time won't be able to dive into it right now, but we can definitely take some time to look into that, see how that would look. So okay. that's the goal. Debt free. That's set up a policy for son before or right around 59. My recommendation could be to leverage the assets that you naturally would take in distribution goes to the checking account when it lands there simply throw it in the policy, that's your checking account, that's your own private bank, and then you just borrow it out to live off of or make investments, acquire more property all through your 60s, 70s, until the uh, 401ks and all that gets completely liquidated. Any thoughts on that? Uh, that sounds perfect. That's. Uh... You're thinking the same as I am. I've been watching you since March, and uh, that's that's that sounds like a great plan. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, I think this is good. We have a we have some forth thinking, you know, some future thinking to do on that. But this is an about estimate, so we're going to do about three chunks in 2020 which is perfect, this is normal. This is like exactly what we like. We already did a chunk to close out this year and 
cash flow will go up the 110 the 281 bonus and if you you know get an increase at your job or that property no longer becomes vacant that'll be a boost as well what would you think the cash flow gain would be on that just by having a tenant uh, the cash flow gain I would say another eight hundred dollars and that's gonna that that alone we can probably throw in a fourth so it'll be a fifth chunk but technically four for the whole 2020 year that'll be awesome I like the sound of that thank you Craig appreciate your time Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of your evening. God bless.